Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you're doing great. It was a great Friday here. I hope you had a great Friday. I uh, did some Christmas shopping today. It's never too early. And I'm, uh, I do a lot of mine online. I know you're not supposed to, but it makes my life easier not to have to drag Seth to stores. He doesn't like to go shopping, so it makes my life easier. So I got most of mine done today. I have a little bit more to do. I have stocking stuffers always to do, but I'm pretty much, I'd say maybe halfway done, which feels pretty good. I like that. I like halfway done. All right, tonight we're going to do 51 and 52 of the bronze. And I forgot to put my rings on. Oh, well, it is what it is. It's, uh, I'm late tonight. I was in there watching something on the TV. It was very, very intriguing. Um, some, risk, some people that go and recover people rescue people from the mud, from the snow, from the, anyway, they got stuck themselves in the mud. That's pretty interesting. All right, well, we are going to pray, and then we will dive into Psalms. Psalms 51 and 52. Lacey is not here tonight. I think she's mad at me because she was sleeping in her chair this afternoon. Well, she's sleeping in my chair this afternoon when I came in, and uh, I think she is mad at me. Okay, well, let's get this done. Let's pray. God, I just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. Just pray, God, that... Um, Praise you that you are on the throne and that you are in control. You are on your throne and you are in control. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are from everlasting to everlasting and you will always be God. Thank you for being our creator. Thank you for being our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you, God, for giving us strength. And giving us refuge. You are mighty and powerful and magnificent. There is no God like you. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truths. That you are caring and loving and kind and compassionate, God. You are trustworthy. You are faithful, God. You want, you are patient. You want none to perish. For loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would open up their hearts to the truth, that um, and you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. We pray for the prodigals to return, God, to repent, be reconciled. God, there is so many things that have happened the last three weeks, plus more, I'm sure. Just three major ones that I am aware of, God. This this shooting, this school shooting in, um, I think, Wisconsin. No, Detroit, Michigan. Michigan, the school shooting where four students were killed by another student and seven were injured and are in the hospital healing. That tragedy, God, that senseless tragedy. And God, the senseless tragedy in Waukesha. I'm not sure what state, God, you know. Where six people were killed, God, and someone decided that running through a parade was a good 
good idea. Another senseless tragedy, God. Many people are still healing from the injuries that they had. Many families are still sad, God. And then the one in Houston, the concert in Houston, where I think 11 people were killed. And many, many were injured. Hundreds were injured, God. We just pray, God. We lift up all these families to you, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for their loss, God. In many, in many ways, they sent their kids to something, and their kids didn't come home. Many in the parade were with their kids, and their kids didn't come home. God, we just pray for healing, for moving forward for these, these three cities that have endured so much. And I'm sure there are other things, too, God, that have been senseless lately that have happened. But those three stick out the most in my mind. God, we pray for all the tragedy that goes on in our country and all over the world. We just pray that you would be with these people, God they would feel your presence, that their needs would be met, God, that um, they would be met by the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus. God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones lately. We just pray, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength in our communities and in our state, God. We pray for people that are healing, either healing from COVID other things or cancer or other diseases, God, we just pray that you would give them strength, that you would heal their bodies, God, that they would feel your presence, that you would give their family strength too, God. God, we know where we are by reading your word. And God, we just pray that you would give us strength as we as we pray for people that have been through disastrous things, God. We just pray that you would give us strength, that you would give us boldness to share your truth and share the gospel of Jesus wherever that we go. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen, pray and share warriors. Amen, I think, means so be it. I think, I think it does. Look it up in my can't get Google and Google for things set up. Although I had YouTube back, but I had to shut it down due to my um, hyperlink you can. I don't know how to open up. That's what we are studying tonight. And some of these verses are quite familiar to me. And some of them will be quite familiar to you too. A prayer of repentance. Wow, there is so much repentance that needs to be done in our country and around the world. I've got to put mascara on today. I don't have very long eyelashes anyway. That's why you can't see my eyelashes, because I did blush, and I did face makeup, but I forgot my mascara. Okay, I didn't go anywhere today, anyway. I'll try to remember it. If I'm here to do this tomorrow, I'll try to remember it. A prayer of repentance to the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet went to him. After he had gone into Bathsheba. So this is repentance of King David. That's what this is about. Have mercy on me, upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, O 
only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Now those are some verses that I have heard before. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased. with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. So David, this was David having a repentant heart, which I don't think that we, even as Christians, have as much of a repentant heart as we need to. I think a lot of times we do wrong and we forget to ask for forgiveness. I know sometimes I do. Sometimes I forget to pray before I eat because I think I'm starving, but I'm really not. But I'm working on that. I'm working on the repentance to having a repentant heart, having a sorrowful, humble heart towards God. And I believe that's what David was experiencing right then. He had sinned greatly before God. So this is what... Um, The superscription of this penitential psalm identifies it as David's prayer for forgiveness after Nathan had confronted him regarding his adultery with Bathsheba. The use of imperatives reveals the heaviness which David viewed his sin and his broken fellowship with God. Have mercy is a plea based on the character of God for loving kindness, uh, for tender mercies, transgression, iniquity, and sin. Against you, against you, you only have I sinned does not mean that David had not sinned against Bathsheba and Uriah, rather that sin always is directed primarily against God. So David's experience paralleled that of Isaiah, who recognized his human frailty and sinfulness when he saw God's holiness. Whatever sins we cover, God will uncover. What we uncover, God will cover. Does Psalm 51.5 does not teach that sin is passed along through the genes, nor that sexual intimacy within marriage is sinful. It is not intended to support celibacy or to imply that David himself was born out of wedlock. Rather, the verse emphasizes human frailty in the constant battle against sin. Hyssop, a small plant that grew on the walls, was used to sprinkle blood on the doorpost of Hebrew homes at the first Passover and later in purification ceremonies. 
create. Create is the same word used in Genesis, emphasizing that the radical cleansing requested can come only from God. Because of the joy that he had experienced, David wanted to share the good news of forgiveness with others. Forgiveness, journey to forgiveness, forgiveness, your path to freedom. Okay, so it says 51, 16, 17, the Old Testament sacrificial system was not rejected. Rather, the law did not prescribe sacrifices for murder or adultery sins, which David had committed. For these presumptions, presumptuous sins, the sinner could only cast himself on the mercy of God. The Lord accepts and forgives these who are honest with him, who are humble before him, and who recognize their dependence on his grace. So that's thing. You know, King David, God said he was a man after his own heart. And King David recognized his sin. Of course, he, had, he kind of got called out by Nathan. And, but he was repentant. He had a repentant heart. And he asked for forgiveness. And God forgave him. So Psalm 52 is the end of the wicked and the peace of the godly. It says, To the chief musician, a contemplation of David when Doeg the Edomite went and sold Saul, went and told Saul and said to him, David has gone to the house of um, Ahimelech or Amalek. Oh, it says, Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully, you love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall put you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous also shall see and fear. They shall laugh at him, saying, Here is the man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of the saints, I will wait on your name, for it is good. So just a little end of the wicked, of God's righteousness, of God's righteous judgment. And then the righteous, how the righteous live for God. And that they trust in the mercy of God forever and will praise you forever because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name for it is good. So we are waiting. We are waiting for our bridegroom to come. We are waiting for Jesus. Do we just sit in our chairs and wait? Or is there much that we can do while we wait? We want to stay on the righteous path. We want to stay on the path of peace. So when he comes back, he will find us doing his work. He'll find his, he will find us doing the work of God. And not the work of man. But the work of God. And that is why we, while we wait, Things. We can pray, we can pray, we can read God's Word, we can learn more about God's Word while we wait, we can share God's truth with others, we can share the gospel with others, we can share the truth with others, we can share, we can use our hands and feet to minister to others. There are so many things that we can do while we wait. And we will take care of our families while we wait. 
There are a lot of things that we can do. We need not be idle. There are lots of things to do. Let's see how we want to do B. A message tonight. Gospel. Hey, Richard. We'll take it to seven. Let's admit one. One ticket per person. Ten persons can ask for a message. Vision. Everybody has to be Four ticket to heaven. May I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it. And that's a good thing because you could never afford to have it. It's free. But only because someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you. Yes, he loves you. And not only loves you as far as his calling God to himself, he also wants you to live for him and his kingdom forever. Forever. For a long time. He's the one who got his bills paid in full. No one wants to go to hell. No one. <clears throat> where there will be no joy and no pleasure whatsoever. And God doesn't want anyone to go there either. The Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. Look at Peter 3 9. But there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We have all done wrong. We have all sinned, haven't we? God's word says if we say we have no sin, he deceives us. 1 John 1 8, sin pollutes, it makes us unclean, unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes, it separates us from a sinless God, for the wages of sin is death, Romans 6 23. In short, our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get into heaven. So he paid for it. Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born and to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous. This is all of us that he might bring us to God, 1 Peter 3.18. When God laid on him the iniquity, the sins of, the, of us all. The sins of us all. Sorry, that's hard to say. Isaiah 53, 6. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15, 34. The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages of our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, and is alive today so you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life, your ticket to heaven. That's right. The Bible says, to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, John 1, 12. So that is awesome. You can become a new person born of God to start a brand new life that pleases God. And of course, all God's children have a ticket to heaven. So the question is, do you want it? It's no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven. God has made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all your sins or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God that it is so. Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. Psalm 336. Just as a man says, yes, I will take this woman to be my wife, God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says, whoever has the Son, Jesus has life. 1 John 5, 12. 
If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. So I'm going to do this prayer, and then if you would like, you can repeat it after me. This prayer doesn't save you. It is the belief in who Jesus is and what he did, and that he is God's one and only son. So, dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So remember what John 3.36 says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? You have everlasting life, like God said. So if you said this prayer, if you invited Jesus to be your Savior, I don't know how that was up there. Welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. They are so happy. They are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his one and only Son. Okay, it is time for me to turn the fan on. It's a little warm in here. It is time for me to give you God's blessing. I don't know if I can turn the fan on. I'm going to a <clears throat> my daughter's dance recital, Christmas, Christmas dance recital. So I don't know whether I'll be here or not. Okay, so this is God's blessing for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So good. Peace through God is so good. So good. Joy, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control are so good. And they keep on going on at the same time. It's awesome. And that is the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. And uh, that is how, as Christians, we are to walk. In love, walk in joy, walk in peace, walk in patience, patience, kindness. I'm sorry, I have to say it fast. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Nine. The nine fruits of the Spirit. Maybe try to memorize those because that's really good because sometimes with your behavior you can go, well, that wasn't very gracious or that wasn't very peaceful, that wasn't very patient. Anyway, it's a good thing to strive to do as a Christian. Um, I love you. I'm going to read your Bible every day. I'm going to pray to God and I'm going to give you some gospel music. Um, 
contemporary Christian, whatever Christian music. I'll just make up a song. All right, well, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to get off of here. I need to go uh, feed our child, not feed, but I need to go make him something to eat. Oh, I already ate. I eat early. I do intermittent fasting, so I, I eat early. And try not to eat after a certain time. Anyway, so one food a day, I think, and one we just come to you and we just thank you. Thank you for uh, learning more and more of your word all the time, God. Learning about the repentant heart, the humble heart, the sorrowful heart, the sorrowful heart that King David had. That many times we have a repentant heart, a sorrowful heart. A humble heart, God. Help us to continue to humble ourselves before you, to reverence you and give you the honor and glory that you deserve, God. Help us to remember that you created us and you created us for your plan and purpose, God, that we might be Give us boldness to go and share your truth and share the gospel hands and feet and the Lord will keep us safe and guard us and keep us where we go. I just pray for blessings. I pray for protection and provision and guidance for anyone that comes here, God, to learn more about your word. That I am nothing, but I'm a willing vessel that will share your word and your truth in the gospel. And pray for all the people that are here right now, Lord God. For all the many hopeless tragedies and tragedies that are still happening, God, that we can look up to. I pray for peace and comfort and peace and comfort. And pray for all my friends, for my family, God. I just pray if any of them need Jesus as their Savior, God, that you would heal them and you would just be. would give me the time to be more in your presence that would help me to testify to the good things that you do in my life and that you would help me to encourage others please bless us with a good night tonight please help us to get everything in order for tonight we do remember that it's a day coming together and celebrating that Jesus was born. That he came as a humble baby. He is now our king. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors, y'all have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome Saturday. Pray for me as my car is not driving the way that it should, but I am going to get it back on the road. Pray for the will of tomorrow. Pray for safety tomorrow. And um, I'll pray for you if you have any comments or you need comments, any prayer requests, leave them in the prayer. I want to be in community with you um, and to be able to encourage you. There are things that you can do for me through my life that have given me hope and comfort and strength. All right. Well, much love.